As consumers, we're targeted by companies who operate a B2C model, that being business to consumer. But in the background, there are many B2B companies, business to business, that often go unnoticed and sometimes they become some of the biggest companies in the world. Today, the company under the spotlight is Salesforce, the software as a service CRM used by over 150,000 business customers, with the likes of Adidas, Amazon and Amex all using the software. But what is the story of Salesforce? And how did it grow to hold a 20% market share of CRM software with revenues in excess of $17 billion? Here's how it happened. To first understand what Salesforce is, it's important to know what CRM is, or rather, customer relationship management. Essentially, it's technology to manage relationships and interactions with current and future customers. And according to Salesforce, it helps companies stay connected to customers, streamline processes, and improve profitability. Salesforce combines everything that businesses need, from marketing, sales, commerce and services, an all-in-one management maintenance and communication tool, to grow the customer base and business. On the website, Salesforce themselves suggest a 20% increase in sales, 32% conversion increase and 34% increase in customer satisfaction when using the software. Those numbers suggest that the business deserves to be where it is, at the top. But 20 years ago, when the business first launched in 1999 in a small San Francisco apartment, the story was quite different. Introducing Mark Benioff, a former Oracle employee who wanted to introduce a software that was cheap, available 24-7 and never needed to be installed or worried about because it was based on a global cloud computing infrastructure. No longer did companies need to spend millions for software to be implemented on every computer and constantly upgraded. At first, most technology companies never saw the threat, underestimating the power and scalability of cloud-based computing and describing Salesforce as just an ant at the picnic. The mantra of Salesforce was do it fast, simple and right the first time, which forced them to create simple and effective code, helping Salesforce to scale. Benioff was joined on that first day in the apartment on Telegraph Hill in March 1999 by Parker Harris, Dave Muhlenhoff and Frank Dominguez, the other co-founders, who were only able to launch the business thanks to the backing of Larry Ellison, Bobby Yazdani and Halsey Minor. The business quickly outgrew the apartment at 1449 Montgomery Street, moving into an 8,000 square foot office at the Rincon Center with just 10 employees. But by November, there were people working full-time in the hallways and conference rooms and the business moved to one market street. By December of that same year, the Salesforce Foundation was founded with a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one model of integrated philanthropy. They made this promise when the firm was making no money and therefore no profit which makes it quite an easy promise to make, but they've continued to donate money, time and resources to organizations in need to this day. In February 2000, Salesforce launched their CRM product about a year after the business was founded, launching the product at an end of software event at the Regency Theatre and creating their no software catchphrase and logo in order to raise awareness and be different. The guerrilla marketing continued when Benioff sent employees to protest at the Siebel conference at the Moscow Center, disrupting his competitors and creating a stir that attracted TV news and a mention in the Wall Street Journal, creating much needed publicity. By the summer of 2000, Larry Ellison was then kicked off the company's board because Oracle had begun developing a competing product, at which time Benioff knew he had a serious product on his hands if Oracle was trying to copy it. After growing steadily, the business launched their first ever Dreamforce annual convention at the Westin Hotel in 2003 which attracted thousands of guests and has continued over the years, initially raising awareness for the company and paving way for an IPO in 2004, where they raised $110 million. Using this capital, the business continued to grow, hitting a billion dollars in annual sales in 2009 with around 55,000 customers and was named the world's most innovative company by Forbes shortly after. What helped this growth was the launch of the App Exchange in 2005, which has been described as an eBay or iTunes for business software, and allows third-party apps to run natively on the platform, with Salesforce taking a cut of subscription fees. It now features in excess of 2,500 applications. 
Part of the company's growth story has been led by acquiring other successful businesses, like Exact Target, for example, in 2013, which became the marketing cloud providing software marketing automation tools. Some of their other acquisitions include Click Software, Tableau Software Data Analytics, and MuleSoft in March 2018, whose AnyPoint platform and integration cloud have now been incorporated into the Salesforce offering. As of 2020, Salesforce have announced another major acquisition, acquiring Slack for $27.7 billion in December 2020, which will become the new interface for Customer 360. As far as the future is concerned, Salesforce have launched a new Einstein platform which simplifies the analytics workflow and produces more accurate forecasts. It enables advanced AI capabilities for sales, services and marketing, and allows developers to build apps using the Einstein engine. Einstein itself was presented to a 170,000 strong crowd, with another 15 million people watching live online at the annual Dreamforce event, which has now become similar in stature to a Berkshire Hathaway conference or an Apple announcement presentation, with the amount of people attending. Speaking of Apple, the business has teamed up with Apple to implement Face ID, Business Chat, and iOS 12 Siri shortcuts into the software. Despite the success the firm has had, it's also seen controversy, particularly in 2019 when they were found to be one of the many Fortune 500 companies who paid an effective tax rate of 0%. In that same year, they also found themselves on the wrong end of a lawsuit from 50 women who accused Backpage.com, a Salesforce client, for facilitating human trafficking, rape and sexual abuse. Salesforce, however, were subsequently cleared of all wrongdoing. In 2018, Salesforce announced their move into the Salesforce Tower in San Francisco, with the building named after the company when they signed the lease to become the anchor tenant in 2014. Salesforce's success has been notable particularly when their CRM is not a unique concept, with Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle, and HubSpot all offering competing products. But Salesforce offering a cloud-based model is the key differentiator. And through their numerous acquisitions, they've built a beast that is now relied on heavily by so many large businesses. With 150,000 customers, not only are they offering a best-in-class service, but even the working experience is as positive as you might expect, with the company being ranked as one of the best companies to work for in America in 2018 and 2019. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.